Are you a violinist that's wanting to improvise and you're just feeling really stuck? In this video, discover what building a foundation for violin improvisation looks like. Hi, I'm violinist Heather Kay. I work with dedicated adult violinists who desire to improve violin technique and play with gorgeous tone. What I'm gonna give you in this video is basically what you really need to develop to be able to improvise. So if you have no music theory background, we're gonna get into some of that in this video, which is an absolute must if you want to improvise well. So number one, this applies to all violinists, no matter if you are classical, if you're a fiddler, if you're a jazz violinist, you need to be able to play in tune and you need to be able to know when you're not playing in tune. Because if you're not playing in tune, nobody's going to want to listen to you. Even the most uneducated person for music will know if something just doesn't sound right. They don't know why, but they know something just doesn't sound right. That's why it's so important to play in tune. You don't have to be Paganini. You don't have to be Itzhak Perlman but you do have to play in tune most of the time <laughs> in order for people to enjoy what you have to offer. That's why I'm starting with this number one tip to improve and to build a foundation for violin improvisation. I put together a pitch exploration journal, which you can find in the corner of this video or linked in the description below to help you with this process. Now this is a process that I share in my Gorgeous Tone Academy and in my monthly group workshops whenever we talk about intonation. You need to get to know the pitches. You need to know the pitches by their name. Doesn't matter if you're thinking in solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, si, do, depending where you live in the world, or by their letter name. It doesn't matter, but you have to relate to that pitch with a specific name of A, B, C, D, F, G, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. The reason why this is important is because every pitch has its own identity, and this is going to help you play more in tune. If you think of the violin only as fingers on the fingerboard or as a number, that doesn't give enough identification to that specific vibration to help you understand if you're playing in tune or not. I would suggest if you want to improve your intonation to spend at least three to five minutes a day with a specific pitch. And I would stay on one pitch for the entire week. So let's start with pitch A. We tune our violin to A. Head into YouTube and find a drone video. You want to find a drone video with real traditional instruments, not a synthesizer, not some sort of vibration, um, vibrational sound. We need specific instruments. And the reason why is that you can really get to the center of that pitch as opposed to something that's false. While you're listening to that drone, to play that pitch. So the first step is to play all the A's you know on the violin. Ideally, you wanna play all the A's possible on the violin, but if you're only playing in, in first and third position, you can play all your A's in first and third. While you're doing this exercise, do make sure your strings are tuned up and <clears throat> sit on that specific pitch for at least three minutes. You can vary the placement or the octave of the pitch wherever it is on the violin. Now, at first I would suggest playing without vibrato so you can really hear without a vibrato uh, tr uh, transforming the pitch. So sit staying really solid. And you can 
On this A here, also see that your open A is vibrating. And by you can tell by that if you're really perfectly in tune. We rely on our ear to let us know if we're in tune or not. You can take it a step further and really be mindful of how that pitch hits your ear and where. Like I said, I go more in depth into this exercise in Gorgeous Tone Academy. If you want to just get started with the pitch exploration journal where I go more in depth into how you can relate to the pitches and be more secure with your intonation, definitely purchase it here or in the description below. You need to know <laughs> your key signatures and chords, how to build chords. So I would study the circle of fifths you can easily find a diagram in Wikipedia and study that diagram so you understand your key signatures. The reason why this is important <clears throat> is because you need to know as you're improvising what key you're playing in, what notes work and what notes don't work. Because again, if you play a G sharp in the key of G, your audience is going to know something isn't right. Doesn't matter if they understand music theory or not, they know it's just going to sound wrong. So if you want to limit the wrong notes that you play within a key, it's good to know your key signatures. Next, you need to understand chords. Very basic, major, minor, diminished, major being happy, minor being sad, and then diminished. Okay, so that's taken a little advanced to understand diminished, but you at least need to know major and minor to be able to improvise. And how chords are built. If you know the key of the piece that you want to improvise in, let's say A minor, you need to understand what notes live in the A minor scale and how to play that scale on the violin and the corresponding arpeggio. That's the first place to start. Know the key and be able to play a scale and arpeggio in that key on the violin. This is something to do daily. So within A minor, you practice your arpeggio in the positions that you know. If you only know first position, practice it in first position. A minor arpeggio is A, C, and E. <laughs> So you just take the first, the third, and the fifth degree of the scale, degree is a fancy word for note in the scale, and that's your arpeggio. Now what I just played for you was a simple A minor arpeggio in first position, but that's not where you wanna stop. You wanna take it further and practice that arpeggio on every note in that arpeggio. So what I mean by that is to practice these broken triads triads meaning three notes in a chord. So we have the first one, A, C, E, that we started off with, and then go back to the C. C, E, A, then go to the E. E, A, C, go to the A. A, C, E, go to the C. And then you could play the E with an extended four if you wanted to. This is walking you through the inversions of that chord. So we're starting off with A minor arpeggio. We have the A minor in the root position. So we have root, A, C, E. So that's our root. It's called root or it's Roman numeral one because the bottom note on those three notes that I played is A. A minor, A is on the bottom, so A, C, E. Okay, now the first inversion is starting with the C. Same notes, but we're starting with the C, so C, E, A. That's first inversion. Second inversion is when we start with the E. Okay, so that's our second inversion, then we're back to root. First inversion, and second inversion. Okay, so you want to practice this daily and think. Root, first inversion, second inversion, root. First inversion, second inversion. Okay, so
It's also a great exercise for intonation, making sure that every note is in tune, and you can do this with the drone of A in the background. It's a phenomenal exercise. Plus, you can take this into other positions. Practice your scales, arpeggios, chords, and root first and second inversion. You also need to know chord progressions. In pop music, it's pretty simple. You only have three or four chords that are extremely re repetitive in a chord progression. Your chord progression may be one, four, five. It may be one, four, six, four, five, one. <laughs> Uh, but it's basically those one, four, five, and six that you need to know within the chord progression. So we'll stick with the A minor example. A minor is our root, so that's one. Count up A, B, C, D. D, it would be the four, it'll be D minor. The five would be A, B, C, D, E, E major. And I'll just demonstrate that for you, okay? So here's A minor, D minor, E major, back to A. You hear how that fits together? So that's just a beautiful chord progression that is good for you to practice within these chords. Now, as you heard, the fifth, E major, had a G sharp in it. It also had a B. And that E major, the G sharp, is our leading tone, which brings us back to A and A minor. So I'll play A minor scale. So you hear that leading tone, it wants to resolve. And that's really good to know as you're improvising to know like, okay, yeah, I want to end, so let's hang out on that G sharp. Uh, so my audience knows that I'm ending my improv. <laughs> Okay, or ending a specific phrase. The other is this B, it's the second. And that also allows it to sound final. So I'll play this again, A minor, D minor, E major. Pretty simple. Practice these tips and you'll find not only will you improve your intonation, your understanding of chords, music theory, chord progression, you'll also improve as a violinist. Have fun building the foundation for violin improvisation. Ciao.